what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get here with the truth. So today we're doing the what's next on undefeated, new, newly crowned WBO welterweight interim champion Brian Norman Jr. following his upset knockout victory over Giovanni Santillan um, on May 18th. Before we get into that, if you could smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel, I really would appreciate any and all support that I can get as I continue to build my channel here. So, oh, and the Fantasy Heavyweight Tournament is starting late this week, guys, so make sure you're paying attention to that. Yeah, Brian Norman Jr., I mean, wow, this guy, it, it's amazing with the Giovanni Santian scenario that, you know, and disappointing because I was a big fan of Giovanni Santian and he just suffered a beatdown loss to Brian Norman Jr. And as quickly as he was in the top 10, he's just as quickly out of the top 10 at 147 for me. And um, it's, it's very disappointing because it, the loss was a mere image to what he did to Alexis Rocha last year. I mean, it was amazing. He was on, you know, except this one might be a little more disappointing because he should have seen uh, something like this coming, you know? Alexis Rocha, I feel, uh, and a lot of the boxing media was not giving Giovanni Santian any kind of credit going into that fight. And Santian just beat the shit out of Alexis Rocha last year, who was the WBO's number one ranked contender. And um, Santian was like number five and he became the number one ranked contender with that with that victory over Rocha. And then, um, you know, he runs into, uh, what's his name here, Terrence Crawford. Um, I mean, he runs into Brian Norman, who is an undefeated fighter, maybe wasn't as highly regarded as Santian in terms of what he's actually done and how long he's been around. But then... Um, proceeds, uh, but this one's for the interim welterweight title, and realistically, now the positioning is even diff way different than it was last year, because um, this year we know Crawford is the favorite to win uh, one and a half titles, actually, it could be two belts, it lo it's looking like, in, um, in August when he fights Is Israel Madrimov, and at 154 and then he would give up his belts at 147 so essentially the winner is the new welterweight champion of the world so he just had so much more riding on this than um than you know last year and and it's just disappointing that he you know came up so short he got beat down brian norman beat him down and i think part of that was because santian just went for broke trying to knock Brian Norman out and he had some success but Brian Norman would just answered everything that Santian threw at him so tough loss for Giovanni Santian big win for Brian Norman congrats to him being the new uh interim champion at welterweight he has already been calling for that title to be um you know for for him to be the new champion the WBC just acted and named uh, Crawford champion in recess. So Mario Barrios has been uh, upgraded. Um, I'm hoping the WBA and WBO follow suit, but I think they're probably gonna wait uh, since he's fighting for both of their titles, the WBA and the WBO title now. In August, uh, Terrence Crawford is. I think they're gonna wait for that fight to happen and then Brian Norman will get upgraded. So all that being said, What's next for Brian Norman following this dominant performance um, and biggest win of his career? Let's run through the top 10 and see. We start with number one unified champion, Terrence Bud Crawford. Not gonna happen. Uh, Bud is moving up to 154. Even if he were to lose to Israel Madrimov, I think he's gonna stay at 154 or he's gonna wanna fight somebody else other than uh, Brian Norman Jr in his next fight. So highly doubt this one happens. Then you got Errol Spence Jr. Spence is making his move to 154 as well. He's challenging for the WBC title there against Sebastian Fundora. So not an option here. 
And there's Boots Ennis, the undefeated IBF champion. Boots is fighting Cody Crowley in July. Um, if victorious, I could definitely see Boots and Brian Norman taking place to unify belts, especially since these are the two guys that are not with the PBC that are going to be the new, newly upgraded champs. I think yeah, there's a very good chance we see um, Stanionis and Barrios to unify belts. And then that would leave the door open for Boots and Brian Norman. But I'm going to lean towards the less likely because Boots is with Matchroom. Norman is with Top Rank. And I think both, at, at the very least, Top Rank will want to build up their champion before they cross the street and set up a unification bout here. Sad but true. But I, I would love to be wrong about this one. But I, I just don't think I am that Boots and Brian Norman uh, fight each other next. Then there's Keith One Time Thurman. Who the fuck knows what Thurman wants to do? But I doubt he wants to fight a guy like Brian Norman with his style. Not a big name. I doubt Keith Thurman wants to fight. Mario Barrios, the now upgraded WBC champion. Um, I don't think so because Barrios has so many other options. Barrios um, has options within the PBC. He also, um, uh, uh, as I just said, a title unification with Stanionis makes a lot of sense for him uh, next to, to get a unified champ. But there's also the prospect of a potential showdown with Ryan Garcia, even though it looks like Ryan's probably going to get suspended for a while. But I just think Barrios and uh, and the PBC have other options that they'd rather pursue first. So I don't see unification with Brian Norman. Then there's Imanta Stanionis, the WBA regular champion. A PBC guy, as I said, unification with... Um, Barrios is way more likely um, if they're going to unify belts, so I don't see this one taking place. Uh, Santian, he's already dealt with Santian, so uh, a rematch highly doubtful because of the one-sided beating that, that that fight was. Then there's Cody Crowley um, sitting there. Uh, Crowley's fighting Boots Ennis. If he beats Boots, he's a PBC guy, so I don't see him fighting um brian norman jr either uh then there's your dennis ugas the the former champion not likely ugas is a is a pbc guy when he does fight he suffered um you know a tough loss last year to mario barrios i think he's contemplating his career i don't think he's an option and then there's abel ramos the former world title challenger ramos um tough cookie but he's a PBC guy, so not likely that Brian Norman gets that smoke here. Um, other guys, uh, Shakram Giasov is highly ranked in the WBA, so I don't think uh, he would uh, be an option for Brian Norman. You got Soleimani Shishosko. Um, I think he could get the crack at Brian Norman, to be honest, because he's highly ranked in the WBO right now. And I think he's going to be avoided um, by the WBC's champion, um, Mario Barrios, at least for unification. And then the WBC will open the door to Ryan Garcia since Ryan's going to be fighting at 147 anyways um, going forward. So um, I don't see him getting his crack at the WBC title. So he might move in the WBO's direction. And top rank might have to just go with it because... Uh, because Brian Norman doesn't have a ton of options. You got Josh Taylor. I think Taylor could probably get this fight. Um, but, uh, you know, would Taylor in his debut fight at welterweight want to take on a guy like Brian Norman? I don't see that be uh, taking place. Maybe they could build to that, but I don't think he wants that to be his debut fight. You got Rod Zab Butaya. Butaya's fighting at 154 now, so I don't see this one. You got David Avanesian. Potentially, he actually fought for the WBO title against Bud Crawford um, less than two years ago. So, you never know. I mean, that, that could be a first option for Brian Norman taking on a former world title challenger. So, maybe. And then there's Connor Benn. Connor Benn, who the fuck knows what he's doing? We know he's talking about fighting Manny Pacquiao next. Um... If he were to beat him and stays at welterweight, then that becomes a more viable option. I think a lot of people want to see Ben 
become a world champion anyways because of his talent level, but who knows what's going on with him. So we just got to wait and see. But Brian Norman, to be honest, right now, still not a lot of options uh, with him being with top rank. But he is about to be a full world champion, and I think they're going to feed him some good fighters, even if uh, he's got to fight a couple no-namers that are within the WBO at first. At least he's got a hold of the belt. And one thing I know for sure that at some point, Boots Ennis is going to be sitting there saying, I'll fight you. And Brian Norman seems to have the confidence to maybe go for that fight. He might want that smoke sometime next year. So we'll see. But next, we don't know. We got to wait and see. Um, hopefully we hear something. Uh, soon about what Brian Norman is going to do next. So that's it. That's what I got. That's my what's next on undefeated, newly crowned WBO interim welterweight champion Brian Norman Jr. following his upset knockout victory over Giovanni Santian. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash the like button, leave a comment, or subscribe to the channel. I appreciate any and all support. This is True Boxing. You've been hit with the truth.